All right, hey everybody. So we're headed up into the mountains. We're going to the DEVC car show and barbecue today. It's uh, run by the Denver Electric Vehicle Council, which is a club that's been here in the Denver area um, with a bunch of electric vehicle enthusiasts uh, for a long time now. And um, they're putting on a car show and barbecue and hopefully the turnout's good. Uh, really don't have any idea. Um, I've got my electric on the back and I'm gonna be doing a present like a little presentation about my restoration project and all the stuff that I've been doing to it and apparently there's some other people who've got their projects too, some conversion projects like motorcycles and uh, a Land Rover off-road vehicle. Uh, so we're gonna go check those things out. So uh, let's go and check it out. I can't wait to get there. All right, so uh, here I am with Richard. We're at the DVC EV barbecue and car show, and he's got this really cool, um, what kind of, this is a Zap scooter? Yeah, it's a Pinot Zap there. We're made from 2008 to 2009. And like a lot of EV companies, they closed up shop. And tell me about the modifications you've done to it and uh, like how fast can it go and what's your range? Uh, so my range with uh, no regen whatsoever is 70 miles. Um, if my uh, controllers worked correctly, which they don't, um, I should be able to do 0 to 60 in less than 5 seconds. Uh, its top speed right now is 80, so 80 miles an hour. Um, <clears throat> with regen, I don't know what my range actually is uh, because I've never tested it that way. This has been finished and built for about a month and a half, so I haven't had a lot of time to do things like range testing. Right. Uh, the, uh, the motor is the uh, factory motor, but it has been modified slightly. It's, it's uh, ventilated. Um, it's got two sets of hulls, two sets of temp sensors in there, all put in there by me. Uh, it's a six phase hub motor. Uh, from the factory, they were running at about 3,000 watts. And that one, uh, if it was running right, because the controllers, I could probably get about 35 kilowatts out of it. Awesome. You know, with my modifications to it. Uh, inside the back part here, there used to be a battery bay for uh, a couple of SLA batteries, you know, car battery size. SLAs, and instead this has now got about 44 amp hours worth of uh, lithium ion in it. Um, right about here, there's another box like that that had a couple of SLA batteries in it. That's got about 44 amp hours, 40 amp hours of uh, LiPo in there. And then underneath the floor, which, uh, <clears throat> which basically I've filled in the hole that used to be between the frame uh, uh -huh. with a box that I made. And that's got another lithium ion pack in there for about 42 amp hours. Awesome. So I've got three packs, three BMSs, each one of them smart. I uh, can access all of them off of uh, the Android app on my phone. Uh, and, and, you know, since they're all independent, each battery pack is managed independently. And we're up here in Rollinsville, just outside of uh, Boulder, up in the mountains. And you drove it all the way here. Uh, from, how from many Westminster? miles? From Westminster. Uh, actually, it's, it's about 32 miles from my house to here. Um, but I couldn't see my phone because of the glare on my phone screen as I was riding by the place. So I missed the exit to come here. I've only been here once before. Uh, and instead went that way another 15 miles and then had to come back and still had 74 volts left in the pack. And you got enough to get home, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, so and this also, is. Also, I've been charging with my smallest charger, so I'm up to 77 volts. I won't have any problem getting home. And you said this is a 2008 model? Uh, yes, this is a 2008 Zapino Zap scooter. Awesome. So an old scooter, but with new technology. And yeah very usable you can drive up here in the mountains and no problem drive i had no problem want, keeping so. up with the motorcycles well awesome thank you richard and thanks for introducing your bike you're also part of this project here uh, which is for kids and getting kids into stem yes that's correct uh so we have tried to make this into uh, legos basically uh so myself and another gentleman dave pence uh, this is our project we have four of these this is the one that is the most complete and that we show the most uh, but the other three are in stages of completing and as much as we can possibly make them. Same motor, same controller, same battery pack, uh, same throttle. So that, you know, when we take these all, things all apart and we give them to kids, uh, it doesn't matter which set of parts they have, they're all the same. And then at that point in time, all they are is plugging things together. It's very much, if you can follow a Legos manual for putting together a Legos kit, you can build this. Awesome. So how can people, if they want to get um, their local school to get one of these kits, or if they want to read about your uh, Zap, how can they find that? Uh, so if you look me up on uh, DIY Electric Car, um, I am Rishi Mays on there. Uh, if you look up the uh, YouTube channel D Bodgery, that's me. Uh, and you'll find this scooter on there. You'll find other EVs I've built. I uh, don't think there's a video on this, but uh, there's a bunch of EV videos, machining videos, battery builds, 
uh, pretty much anything that's EV related, I've got videos on out there. Excellent, and I'll put into the description the contact information for uh, Dave of the DVC, who he will get you the information to build this at your local school. So thanks again, Richard. Thank you. All right, so here with Brendan. Brendan? Yeah, Brendan Miller. And he's got this super awesome Katana Kawas or, uh, Suzuki. And this is an electric conversion. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, this is an electric conversion of a 1990 Suzuki Katana. It uh, uses a, a DC motor and uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. And um, it's, uh, it's about 10 years old now, so it's uh, some older technology, but it's uh, just a fun little project that I Work, been working on and tweaking and doing things too for for a decade now so very cool <laughs> so of course the two questions how fast does it go and how far does it go so it tops out about 60 miles an hour um, okay. it's not a not a speed demon it's a uh, you know more of a more of a slow cruiser for around town mm -hmm. um, it uh, has about eight kilowatt hours of batteries which uh, you know, with this particular bike gets you about anywhere from 50 to 80 miles uh, up here in Colorado in the mountains it's, it's more on that 50 and uh, when you take it in the mountains but around town it can do a little more very cool and now did you convert this yourself so originally it was converted by uh, another gentleman um, who did it a couple of years before I bought it. Uh, did the welding for the mounting brackets and uh, some of the other um, components and uh, had some other batteries in it and uh, kind of took it from there and, and fleshed it out a little bit more and put the different controllers and battery management systems and whatnot. Awesome. So do you have further plans for it? Up the power, maybe range, or are you moving on to other projects? Uh, I think it's about time to move on to another project, to be honest. Uh, there's not a whole lot more that can be done with this without really ripping it apart and starting over again and there's just so much better technology out there today so we're uh, we're gonna take advantage of that and I great think move on another to motorcycle I don't think so I think uh, I think I'm gonna do a, do a car next car? a little more flexibility a little more room to, to uh, you have around. any models in mind uh, I really want to do a classic. Um, I'm, right now, I'm leaning toward uh, uh, 1968 Datsun, Datsun, whatever you want to say. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, SPL 311, which is the Roadster. Very cool. called the Fair Lady. Yeah, yep, super cool. 2000 Roadster. Yeah. Uh, okay, and where, people want to learn more about your bike or your possible Datsun project. Where can they find you? Um, I, I'm not on YouTube or anything, so um, I'm uh, with the Denver Electric Vehicle Council. I'm the committee, um, the conversion committee chair, so uh, we have a newsletter and my contact information's in there, and if uh, you find the website, you can just sign up for the newsletter, and uh, yeah, you can get a hold of me that way. Awesome. Great to meet you, Brendan. Yeah, Thanks for telling you. us about your bike. Yeah, no problem. All right, so uh, we're here with, what's your guys' names? I'm Nick. I'm Hunter. And they've got this awesome little mini bike that they converted themselves. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, yourselves and how you got into converting, uh, e making EVs? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> we're web developers. Uh, we are not classically trained in any way on hardware uh, uh, or engineering. Um, but we uh, got really interested in it after going to a couple of uh, conferences and um, seeing some stuff online that people were doing. And it's just incredible how much more um, power you can get out of an electric motor versus a gas motor in, in a lot of these classic cars and, um, and motorcycles uh, that are also here. Uh, so we decided to take a stab at it. Um, we were going into it pretty fresh, so we wanted to make sure that it was simple and it was going to be cheap because if it went wrong, we didn't want to waste a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, and, and feel like we didn't, you know, completely go bankrupt over over this project. So the considerations that we took were simple and cheap. Um, and I don't know how prevalent that is in the overall outcome, but uh, that was kind of what we went in. Uh, and again, so. Uh, everything about this was learned on the fly. We had spent months ahead of time researching how a motor controller works. Why do you not just plug a battery straight into a motor? Um, what, what good does that give you versus having a potentiometer mm -hmm. that just goes battery motor? Um, and just taking all of those considerations. Awesome. So the two questions, how fast does it go and how far does it go? Great question. It goes... 
close enough to 40 miles per hour to get nervous while riding it. And uh, as far as range, uh, probably about 10 miles. We haven't really uh, properly measured that, but it's, it's probably closer to 20 or 30 on range. Yeah. Cool. And what type of battery and what's the voltage? Uh, it's a 72 volt, 20 amp hour. And uh, we're not actually certain on the chemistry. We bought it uh, pre-built. So I think it's either lithium ion or lipo. Uh -huh. uh, we're not quite sure. Um, awesome. But yeah. Yeah, and so we put all of our components neatly in uh, a little, uh, uh, not crawl space, but cabinet. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and that all fit nice and neat. Uh, the wiring looks bad-ish, but it's definitely better than it was yesterday. Awesome. Yeah. Had to get it show ready. Well, thanks guys. I appreciate you uh, introducing yourself and your little bike. Of if people want to learn more about your bike, your conversion, or yourselves, where can they find you? Uh, nothing yet, but stay tuned. We'll probably we'll be doing another project and being a little bit more public with that one. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks guys. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. All right, I'm here with Woody. He's the owner of Electromod Garage up here in Rollinsville, Colorado. And your company specializes in converting uh, gas-powered cars to electric. So what do you got here, uh, Land Rover? We have, we have a 2000 Land Rover Discovery. Obviously, this is just the chassis. We are in the process of converting it to an uh, electric drivetrain with a Tesla motor. It'll be a roughly 400, 450 horsepower motor. And uh, we're kind of just stabbing everything up right now. We have just two different styles of mounts that we tacked in. Nothing too major. We're gonna actually get them CNC plasma cut and we're gonna wrap them over the top. Um, it'll be a little different, but we're trying to make a car that basically anybody can drive. Anybody can just get in, turn the key, kind of like a Tesla or a Nissan Leaf or anything like that, nothing too complicated. And uh, there's really no options for like kind of taking things off road or even mild off roading in the electric world. So we're trying to do something that's like a classic-ish car. It's not the most classic Land Rover. It's not a Defender, obviously, but uh, it's something that was a reasonably priced vehicle and the engines aren't great on them. So you kind of just get rid of all that stuff and then you can have an electric drive track. Excellent. Yeah, we talked a little bit before about some of the best candidates for electric conversions are the most unreliable gas cars because they leak oil or they cause problems. You have to repair them all the time. So when you get rid of all that problem, you can put an electric motor in and the reliability shoots up and, and it's just more usable. Yeah, it's just a great vehicle. And the great thing about these Land Rovers are too, is that all the diffs line up and they're all on the same side of the car because a lot of vehicles have a diff on one side and the transfer case or the the rear diff will be in the middle and these are all offset to the passenger side of the car so it makes things a little bit easier as far as like fabbing everything up though because you can clearly see there's not a ton of extra room to like angle this motor in a weird fashion all right so two questions how far does it go and how fast will it go um we are shooting for like 150 to 180 mile range obviously a lot of that's dependent on landscape and how you drive it um this thing will probably have a top speed. It's really dependent on tire size, uh, between 100 and 110 miles an hour. But the goal of this car is not to be uh, super fast. It's to be a good mountain car because we live in the mountains of Colorado. And this will have plenty, plenty of ground clearance and plenty of power. Awesome. And so your history is you're into BMWs and classic German cars. And yes. you want to do a couple of those too? Yes. I would love to get my hands on a few older German cars, especially BMWs or maybe a Mercedes, something like that. That's just like a beautiful example of an old car that is very expensive to maintain in the long run, but we can make them a little better with the electric stuff. Awesome. So you've got the shop here in Colorado. If people want to follow around on your build, uh, where can they find you? Electromodgarage.com is our website and on the bottom is our Instagram feed. I guess we'd be at Electromodgarage on Instagram or on Facebook. I will say we don't use a ton of Facebook, so website, you can contact us or follow us on Instagram. Awesome. Well, thanks a bunch for uh, talking about your project. We look forward to seeing it complete. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that was really cool. Um, I learned a lot about those other people's conversions and all the different styles and all the things that go into a conversion that you might not have thought about. Um, what do you think, Zoro? Did you like it? <laughs> yeah, he liked it too. He doesn't like the mountain roads though. I had a great time. I presented on my electric. I didn't uh, film it. I should have filmed a little bit of it, but um, everybody loved the electric, asked tons of questions. So. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little kind of a break from the normal flow and we'll get back to the normal stuff next week. Thanks for, thanks for watching.